Golisopod might be looking like a glassy Pokemon for Spring Cup, but obviously it has some certain use if you can pair it up with certain Pokemon as well. So the meta has a lot of grass types and also has a lot of flyers that can absolutely be a severe threat to your Pokemon alongside Lantern. So by covering those weaknesses, you can have something like an exceptional team around your Golisopod, which happens to be one of the best generalists that exist for Spring Cup. So now without any further ado, cue the intro! Let's begin today's content with goalie support up in front, followed up by two Pokemon that can cover up its weaknesses. Of course, one of those is still gonna be weak to that lantern, so goalie support has to stay even up against the lantern. So let's see how this is gonna unfold because this is not the only bad lead that we have on the entire video. Later on, you're gonna see more of those bad leads and most certainly a lot of lanterns along the way. So Surf here will not finish us off, but another one will just do the trick but to be fair I do not care that much because they might be having two shields on their side but my fairy winds can absolutely get me a lot of energy in the process for this individual matchup. What I figured out is that fairy wind is not that great offensively and of course that uh, jump up that we have has a lot of struggles offensively especially on the attack stat which means that a lot of those CMBs will be lost. This is a Pokemon that loses CMBs both to that lantern and of course Ferrothorn which is kind of weird but still it happens so anyways here now we're just gonna keep going at it with Tentacruel over that Araquanid and at this point I'm pretty sure that whatever they throw can absolutely be resisted so Bubblebeam is gonna go through but of course whatever they do is still gonna be doing no damage at all even though they're getting all of those debuffs on our side eventually I still need to get my hands on that skull to finish off the remaining HP that Araquanid is having and now with that Roserade returning for the final time into this battle, I might actually have a chance at almost one shooting it down with my Sludge Wave. After all those debuffs though, perhaps they can still survive, which is kind of understandable, but at the same time, we can easily switch out to our Jumbluff to switch into an amazing closer for our team. Into the next battle now with Empolon up in front, this Pokemon is a very bad lead for us because not only my Golisopod is gonna struggle up against it, but also uh, my poison moves from that Tentacruel White also has Drill Pack, which can almost one shot down my Golisopod and do severe damage to my uh, Jumbluff. So over here, I'm just gonna keep going at it with the X Scissors. And something that I figured out is that on two shields, by sacrificing two shields, your Golisopod can absolutely finish of even an Empoleon up in front which is kind of a game changer if your opponent is not careful at all and you want to rely a lot on that team alignment. So here comes now that goalie support of their own so Sludge Wave here will connect I guess on that amazing full health scale of goalie support and we almost one shot them down. Excisor will definitely finish us off but at this point that Sludge Wave already did its job and Tentacruel can now rest. So able to farm some extra now from that trainer and Jumbluff will be returning for their end now for the end game. So RL Ace is gonna be exchanged quite a few times here, but to be fair, what we need to do is to, jump, to, to just keep going with those Jumbluff Aerial Aces because we have the slight energy advantage. I guess we got two or three of, the, of those fairy winds that we farmed up from that Golisopod. So another Aerial Ace is coming up, we can definitely survive it while Empoleon stands no chance at up against our next move. Now with that Jumbluff returning into the battle and with the shield that we got left for the end game, of course we can make them top left this battle in a very good way for us. Into the next battle now with another lantern up in front. This Pokemon is pretty troublesome as we have already said from the first battle of this video, but let's see how well we can adapt to the situation right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and block I guess the first move, it ends up being just a Thunderbolt and of course following up you can always go for more egg scissors because for the Surf which is still resisted but if they want to snipe you down they can already do it with a combination of a few sparks, they need 6 of those sparks which means that you 
you can always outspeed to your five of those uh, uh, Saddle Claws to charge up your X Scissor. So Thunderbolt here can easily be taken by Jumbluff, but the second one might actually put us in a pickle. So what I want to do at this point is to go ahead and keep farming up, and because these were my first battles with this team, I didn't know that Jumbluff could lose a CMP to Lantern, but it happens, so keep that in mind just in case you have a similar scenario like me. Anyways, down they go, I undercharge as well, just in case I could go ahead and farm a little bit extra with that Fairwind, because I definitely want to avoid that that CMP and of course right after we're having the battle of the tentacles so we are not in a very good spot at all but uh, hopefully they might be having something severe weak to my poison jumps because otherwise I am pretty doomed hopefully though they have something like a farfunk version of this Hado mobile and they let the first move go through which is absolutely awesome for me uh, so here comes now the complete from down and perhaps they did, they did not expect my skull because Acid Spray is the most common move that Tentacruels might throw at this point, but to be fair, we do not even have that move on our arsenal, and that's mainly because I hate it a lot. A lot of people are gonna struggle with your Sludge Wave, and I still think that you need to give it a shot if you do not have already. So, here comes now that X Scissor, once again the Apollon, which is another bad lead for us, straight bad leads back to back for today's content, and of course, we will go down eventually, but but at the cost of them spending one shield. So now we have two, they have one, and my moves can absolutely be clutch over here. So I guess we do not need to block, we can still go ahead and completely farm down or not. Okay, we need to sacrifice a shield, as it seems that Empoleon is pretty troublesome with those steel wings, and at some point we need to block no matter what. So my sludge wave now will go through, and it ends up being the nook on that poor Aboma Snow for the one shot and one more for the second grass type that they have on the face of Cherim. This is a very spicy Pokemon that I tried to use to be fair, but because it takes so much time with those bullet seeds to get there to the solar beam or the hyper beam, well this is not worth that much for Cherim to have a severe spot in the meta of, uh, of uh, Spring Cup and especially a very impactful one. Anyways, back to back moves now from our end and we managed to get the knockout out on Empoleon as well. With Cherim returning, I'm pretty sure that we do not have to block anything from them coming on our side because one poison jump later we can easily farm down in the process and of course grab another huge victory for us. Up against a grass type now which is part ice and of course the only nook that they have is gonna be energy ball which means that we can absolutely block it once and absolutely farm down in the process. That was an absolutely absolute certainty. Uh, yeah, that was kind of weird, but still, it happens. Anyways, I realize now on that poor uh, jelly set, and because they already have five of those hexes, I decide to switch out to my Jumbluff trying to catch one Shadow Ball, and just in case they have an Ice Beam, I cannot risk it at all, so I'm just gonna go ahead, catch that Shadow Ball, and see how they respond. So, at this point, I'm just gonna let the second move go through as well, as it seems they have no Ice Beam at all, and instead, I'm just gonna keep going at it with my energy balls. This time we can manage to guarantee the knockout and of course that poor Abomasnow can easily farm us down. The battle is definitely not over yet because Quagsire is at the back. This Pokemon can already survive the moves that we can throw and at the same time it has access to Stone Edge to one shot down the remaining HP that my Golisopod has while its ground typing will not be appreciated by our poison moves. But of course as you can see here we got the shield, they have zero shields and we can still keep pressuring with our skulls which is an amazing move that was not nerfed last season. I'm not complaining just claiming some facts over here because the the last time I said that uh, Skald needed to be nerfed, absolutely got uh, destroyed down in the comment section. And yeah, I agree with you, I'm all in for very good moves in the game. It is not overpowered, but still it has a lot of play with its amazing damage output, while it also has a chance to debuff the opponent. Anyways, into the next one, as we're meeting up with yet another Empoleon. I believe this is on the Switch. I did not see their lead Pokemon because I was 
was talking, I do that a lot. And of course, Golisobot can absolutely farm down here with those Shadow Claws. Down they go in the process, X is on now on the next Pokemon, and of course I have a feeling that even that Dugong will struggle a lot because whatever they throw can absolutely be resisted by our typing. Golisobot has so much play in the meta, and oh yeah, this is the Trevenant matchup. You do not see Trevenants that often, so that's why I remember that this one was in the lead. So yeah, anyways, that was weird. Uh, Sludge Wave now on their end, they managed to block, that was a very good block for them, because because now we can easily go in there with a jump bluff and destroy them down with a simple aerial ace. Even if they did not block though, they could still stand no chance at all because my sludge wave could absolutely go ahead and one shot them down. Dugong now returns to the battle, just gonna get my hands to the aerial ace, not gonna throw it, as instead I'm just gonna switch out to my goalie support and now I can easily reach to the energy ball since they have zero energy on their back and at the this point the one shot is imminent. Into the final one now trainers with Shadow Mobile up in front. All we need to do here is to throw resisted moves but they do not know it because a simple liquidation that it's still possible from your uh, goalie support can do severe damage so they're trying to catch I guess on the victory bell but we know much much better. Anyways, here comes out the acid spray, I'm just gonna take the move, no reason to block, if it was a sludge bomb, I could be surprised, but obviously not a lot of victory bells, sad of victory bells at least, will run that move, uh, since acid spray can debuff the opponent no matter what. Anyways, now energy ball on that shield of theirs, and since we cannot reach to yet another energy ball, I'm just gonna throw here the air lace for some cheap damage, and we end up taking a shield out of them, that was absolutely awesome. Power up punch, play rough, iron head, anything can easily be taken now to our tentacle. And when you're using a team that can still have a lot of play against those double razor levers, I guess it is pretty notable that it deserves at least a like before you go from this content because we just got that final victory to end this video. As I have already said, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new to my content. A huge thank you for staying till the end. Not everyone does that. So thank you so much trainers and over here I have two videos for you to check out. Feel free to check them out and I will catch you up later into the next one.